Hey everybody, Austin here again with another Let's Play video. As you can see, it's going to be Chippendale Rescue Rangers for the NES. Uh, this is a game I actually did a long play of, probably in uh, sometime in 2010 or 2011. And uh, as, uh, like what I've been doing with a lot of those old long play videos, I've been going back and doing actual live Let's Plays of them. So we're going to be playing through Chippendale once again, many, many years later. Uh, this is a pretty fun game. This is actually a game I, I grew up with back in the day. I don't play it too much these days, primarily just because it's it's very easy. It's not uh, really a difficult game at all. Uh, although there are some tricky sections towards the end of the game, but uh, you know you guys you guys will see what I mean by those once we get there. Um, so yeah, this is one of those games where you can really just blaze right through it without really too many issues. Um, so this really shouldn't cause us too much trouble today. Uh, you do have to be a little bit careful though in some instances when you play this game, not just towards the end of the game, but at any part of the game. Uh, for instance, if you try to pick up blocks and throw them when you're in the air, uh, you have a tendency of stopping where you are in the middle of the air. So uh, you can lose some uh, of, your, of your positioning that way. You might accidentally fall down a pit by accident because you've thrown a box over top of a pit or something like that. Um, so you need to watch out for things like that. And um, likewise, when you do pick up boxes, you are sort of, uh, it, you're sort of vulnerable for a, a few frames and you gotta watch out for that as well. So uh, when you see enemies coming your way, sometimes it's wiser to just try to jump over them instead of uh, stopping and picking up your boxes or whatever. And uh, yeah, Chippendale is not really a complex game. Um, you've got boxes you can pick up over the playfield. As such, you use those as weapons. Uh, sometimes they can reveal health pickups. You got these boxes here. Um, sometimes they're health. Sometimes they're that invincibility B, whatever his name is. And other times it's scripted events like this, where you open it and uh, you know, something like that happens where a guy opens up a wall. Man, it's not just a guy. There's a name for that character, and I completely forgot his name because it's been a really long time since I've played this game or seen the TV show. <laughs> Chippendale Rescue Rangers was a show I also grew up with as a kid um, back when Disney cartoons were shown all the time on um, uh, typical TV. And uh, yeah, so... Man, all those shows back in the day, uh, Darkwing Duck, uh, freaking um, DuckTales, uh, Goof Troop, all that stuff. Uh, lots of Disney cartoons I actually grew up with. Uh, this level, you want to kind of be a little bit careful. You got these, like, ninja squirrel dudes that come down from the sky. Um, they have a tendency of just coming down really quickly. And as you'll notice, when you jump in this level, you... Uh, you have a tendency of sort of like scrolling up with the screen and you, you're like sort of like pushing the screen along like you notice when I jump up I'm like um, you know three quarters of my way towards the top of the screen which makes it uh, a little risky for uh, instances where you've got guys coming down um, from the top of the screen like that so you gotta be really careful you can actually die really really quickly here you only get three hits in this game um, and that actually seems like a lot for the kind of game it is, but you'll realize that there's not really much, um, there's not much invulnerability, um, when you take a hit. So, you know, you'll take a hit and you'll get a couple of frames of invulnerability and then you'll take another hit and then another hit and you're dead really, really quickly. So you can die fast in this game. So you, you do have to be careful with that. So Chippendale is really a game where you want to, uh, um, if you don't want to be dying a lot, just take your time, play smart, um, and so forth. So we're already three levels in, and uh, one thing you guys will notice me not doing is grabbing as many of these uh, icons as I can. Uh, there's a ton of these icons around, um, but truth be told, they're, they're pretty much just for extra lives. And you'll notice me skipping a lot of enemies, too. Um, simply because I can. But that was risky right there, because now I have no hit points. <laughs> I'm like, I'm doing a let's play. I can play a little bit differently than I normally would. 
So what I've actually done is slowed myself down because now I want to try to get some health back. Because I've taken two hits thinking I could jump over those guys. Oopsie, I just died. But it's okay, because I've got a lot of lives already. Uh, if you hit select, you can uh, go to this menu here. So it tells me how many stars I have, how many flowers I have. And I think it might be the sort of thing where if you get 100 flowers, you get an extra life on the screen or something like that. Uh, and then P is my lives. So I have four lives left already. So I've already gotten a couple extra lives since I've started. Um, but basically what I was saying is that you know, I'm not really hell-bent on getting all these flower icons, um, mainly because uh, you get a ton of lives over the course of the game. Like, when I did a, uh, a playthrough of this on Twitch a couple weeks back, I think I had like 15 lives by the end of the game. And that was without trying to really pick up a whole lot of uh, flower icons. So, for the, for the sake of this Let's Play, I'm not going to be spending my time grabbing every single box and trying to get all the hidden items and whatnot. Um, I just don't care that much. <laughs> and I highly doubt you guys do either. Um, a lot of these Let's Plays I do, I like to try to get through them as quickly as possible. And that is exactly what we're going to be doing here. So... Plus, uh, if you guys go and you try to play the game yourself, it sort of uh, doesn't spoil all of the... Uh, hidden secrets that, are, that there are to find, you know, you can discover what's under those boxes yourself, basically. And, um... So this part right here, you just need to jump on these, uh, spigots. And... Stop the water. You will get hurt if you touch the water. So this is a good spot to sort of take things easy, because uh, if you fall in these pots, you die in one hit. And uh, I prefer to not have a box in my hand, because uh, if I throw a box over top of the uh, the pots, again, you sort of stop in midair for uh, a couple of frames, and that could leave you uh, vulnerable. One of those flying enemies could come out and hit you, and you'll fall to your death in one hit. So there are quite a few parts of this game where you do die instantly, pretty much, and you've got to watch out for that. So that boss, he actually comes out from different heights in the screen, and, um... So you got to be careful about that. Try to stay away from the sides of the screen, otherwise he'll come out from, like, the bottom portion and you'll get hit. Now these red boxes here, they're like these spring guys. So if you see the red boxes, just take them out from a distance. That's probably the easiest way to go about it. Or you can just miss like me. Actually, I'm going to take the bottom way. I like the bottom way. So there's a lot of enemies in this game where you can basically... They have a pattern, but as long as you like throw a box at them or something, they, they do another pattern and it makes them easier to avoid. And that's exactly what happened with those... Whatever the hell you want to call them. I don't even know what you call those things. <laughs> Not the rabbits, but like the dudes with the balls on the hands. Uh, these guys take two hits to, to, to take out. And then right here, you need to toss a box up. To keep these balls from coming out. Uh, you don't want to jump on this one. Because then this happens. And you gotta turn it off.
These big apples you could pick up, they actually will cut through multiple enemies. Oh, bad example. I was hoping to cut through both those boxes. And as you could tell, a lot of the bosses in this game are actually really simplistic. They don't really take that long to kill. Um, a lot of times you can toss your little red ball thing and... Oh, bad time to get an extra life star. Uh, basically, as you can tell, you know, every single boss has that little red ball you basically throw back at the boss. And... Um, the bosses are big in this game, but they're not really that complex. They just usually have one pattern, and uh, that's it. And they die pretty quickly. Alright, this is actually one of the trickier parts in the game. You're kind of at the mercy of these, uh, these platforms. And we got a good pattern. Sometimes they, uh, they they don't come out when you want them to, and you fall to your death. And apparently this is a level without a boss fight, so... Now this game is a uh, two-player co-op game as well. And uh, the game is a lot trickier if you're playing it with a friend. And that's kind of one of the uh, one of the appealing factors of this game is the fact it's got a two-player co-op simultaneous mode. Um, and so if you have a friend that plays a lot of retro games with you, uh, I do recommend playing this game with a second player. Um, I, I actually don't usually like playing games in two-player mode. I, I like uh, you know playing these action games solo. Um, but Chip and Dale is a game that definitely seems like it works a lot better in two-player mode than it does in one-player. One-player, it, it almost just seems too easy. You can just take your time and just get through anything without pretty much uh, any problem at all. And um, But in two-player mode, you can pick each other up, you can throw each other in the pits, you can uh, stun each other by throwing boxes at them. Uh, so it you can kind of see where it gets a lot trickier in two-player mode. Um, so yeah, like I said, if you got some friends that play retro games with you, or if you got a spouse that likes to play some NES, um, play this game in two-player mode. It should be pretty fun. And a lot of these bosses, if you hit them at the right time, you can actually hit them twice with one shot. And a lot of these bosses only take like five hits, so... And as you can see, I'm skipping through most of the story seg segments. They're pretty much just handled in that, uh... That manner, where it's just black screen, a portrait, and some text, and it's nothing really special. Uh, typically what it is, is it's, uh, your comrades just telling you, giving you some tips, and that's pretty much it. It's nothing terribly special. So, extra life. I saw that extra life out of the, the corner of my eye, so I was like, I better stop, otherwise I'm gonna push it off screen. I don't really need the extra lives. Uh, I mean, we've probably got, oh yeah, we got 11 lives right now, so... You know, again, this is one of those games where you get a ton of extra lives, and I'm just running through the game, too. I'm not, like really spending a whole lot of time in each of these levels, you know. Back in the day when I would play this game, I would grab every single box, kill every single enemy, and now I'm just like, yeah, I don't care.
But much like a lot of Japanese developed games from back in the day, the game is set up in a manner where you can just kind of just hold right and keep going. Um, basically, some of the earliest forms of, you know, games kind of almost designed around speedrunning. Um, that's not to say speedrunning games is easy, but... Um, You know, some of the earliest speedrunning kind of started with games like Super Mario Brothers, and I think Japanese developers kind of like... ...imbued that design philosophy in a lot of their games, their platformers and so forth. Um, their platformers would oftentimes have... ...lots of opportunities for constant flow. Um, where you can just kind of keep going if you know exactly what to do. Um, and Chippendale is like that. You can literally just keep going and jump over the enemies and, you know, not pick up boxes and just... It's fun to just kind of keep going like that in this game. It's got a good flow to it. But the great thing about games like this is it doesn't force you to play like that. You can just stop and grab every single box and 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 whatnot. Um... So we've only got three more levels to go. We're actually getting close to the end of the game again. Um, it's not actually a very long game. It, it's much longer if you stop and take your time. But as you can see, I'm not really stopping and, and taking much time at all. So... Now the last level in this game, actually, like I said, it is pretty tricky. There are uh, a couple of tough parts on the final stage. Some of the tough parts you can just sort of avoid by just taking your time much like you could in other parts of the game. Um, but the last screen in particular uh, could be tricky, and you guys will see what I mean once we get there. We're getting close, so you're going to see it uh, very soon. And apparently that was another level without a boss fight. <laughs> oh yeah, this guy uh, throws the boxes back out at you, so you have to hit him in the legs. And you can do that by ducking and throwing your box. These fans here just kind of blow you backwards really quickly, actually. So you need to just run up to them like this and just jump. And you got to watch out for this part because now they're throwing you into these uh, tacks. Oh, the knockback in this game is really bad. I mean, it's not bad like, or it's like Ninja Gaiden where you're gonna get, <laughs> where the majority of your deaths are from knockback into uh, pits, but it is something you have to be be careful about if you're trying to get through this game, say without dying or something like that. Um, you can just die really quickly in this game. Um, <laughs> But with how easy the game is, that's probably a good thing that you can die uh, very easily if you let your guard down. I guess letting your guard down is um, a good reason to die. Not necessarily because the game is cheap or anything like that, but...
Alright, so we're on to the final stage, guys. Alright, so this part you can avoid a lot of the enemies. Kind of like, yeah, I'll just let them go by. And that's probably the best way to handle this part. Otherwise, it just takes you a lot longer. Again, the great thing about this game is it gives you kind of a choice on how to handle a lot of these sections in the game. Um, you know, can I just avoid the enemies or can I, should I take them head on? Uh, that's one of the fun things about the game. Uh, my playstyle on this game now is vastly different from what it was when I was a kid. In that, I, I in many cases, I just avoid the stuff. I'm like, you know, I don't actually have to deal with these guys, so I'm just gonna skip them. I'm gonna go go under them or over them or, um. This part though is actually where it starts to get a little bit trickier. Um, once we get past these axe things, yeah, right here is where it gets hard. So let's see if we can just skip that guy. Yeah. Whoa, that was close. And that's it. Boss fight. Oops. And that's it. We just beat Chippendale Rescue Rangers. Again, it's not a not a very difficult game, and it's obvious that it was a game that was geared towards kids. Um as a kid, I couldn't really tell that because I was just a kid and video games were video games, you know? Everything was fun. Um, regardless of how easy it was, everything was still a challenge. Because um, that's just how it was when you were seven years old playing a video game. And video games were still a relatively new thing to uh, many of us kids back then. So, uh, playing it as a... 35 year old adults different story altogether. I've been playing video games for my whole life And so playing through this game now is just It's just a cakewalk um, Doesn't mean it's not still fun though It is a, a game I do still like to revisit because it is fun to just roll through it. Um, it is an enjoyable game Maybe not uh, the best Disney Capcom game out there, but it is still pretty awesome uh, And great especially in two-player mode like I said so, alright guys, I'm going to leave it with that. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this Let's Play. Not the most complex Let's Play, um, or the most talkative, but uh, again, I hope you guys enjoyed it regardless. Uh, if you're new to my channel, please subscribe. I've got a lot of Let's Plays on my channel you can check out, uh, and many more to come in the near future, as well as other types of content. So, uh, for everybody else, thanks again for your usual support. I appreciate it. Thanks again for watching, and I will catch you guys soon.